And now for the 2017-2018 uh, winter forecast, and the headlines is let it snow, let it snow. And I think there is a potential we could see quite a bit of snowfall. If we look at the uh, analog uh, months that we used on my preliminary uh, winter outlook, you can see these were the years. And again, we look at uh, a number of factors when we come up with the analogs. Uh, probably number one would be the insula event, El Nino or La Nina, <clears throat> and the um, also we look at the North Atlantic Oscillation, the Atlantic Oscillation, as long as well as the uh, ocean waters of the Pacific, especially in the Northern Pacific, uh, from the Gulf of Alaska down to the west coast of the U.S. And now with the uh, newest one, we can see these are the new analog years that includes a few years from the 1990s and 1950, 1951. And we've dropped some of these years. So two of these years were a little bit warmer than normal. One was colder. And as far as snowfall amounts, uh, uh, one of them was very snowy, but two of them were below normal as far as snowfall. So kind of a wash there. And if we look at the... Uh, the most important factor when we consider the ENSO is usually the ENCLOSE, ENSO uh, 1, 2, or uh, 3.4, and the uh, maps will show you are the 3.4. This was last month, you can see the forecasted uh, for the winter months, we would be in a uh, weak uh, La Nina to potentially a very significant strong one, but uh, again, looks like uh, that's continuing to be the case. And the only difference in the trend is not quite as steep of a rise as we get towards next summer towards uh, El Nino, but certainly we could see that coming on here maybe over the next uh, 12 months or so. And if we look at the uh, water currents, this was a very favorable setup last year for a cold and snowy winter across the uh, central and eastern U.S., but the problem is we had a lot of cold water that kept expanding. We had a very, very bitterly cold uh, Asian winter and our summer and fall and as the winter began just horribly cold conditions and that helped to cool the Pacific waters as they then traveled uh, to the east into the uh, central and eastern Pacific. This year however we see an expanding, this is a month ago and we'll flip this back and forth and you'll notice how this whole area basically becomes warmer just in the last month and you can see how we uh, go back to last month and then to this month last month, this month, and you can see the significance of the warmth, and that certainly has a chance to promote this high. We also have a blocking pattern, looks like it's going to set up over uh, Greenland, and that's also good for the uh, potential for a cold and snowy eastern U.S. And if we look at the forecast for the ENSO event, you can see uh, earlier, about a month ago, you can see it looked like we'd be mainly in a neutral pattern, but you notice how I got it on the weaker side uh, towards La Nina versus over here on the stronger side. And as we looked at the potential for us going into a, a La Nina, the best chances were during the winter months with a little bit less chance it would go the other way. And now you can see the most recent uh, uh, outlook. We are now in a La Nina and a very strong chance it will continue that way right on through pretty much the entire winter. And then we may transition back again to the neutral, almost no chance that we would see us heading towards an El Nino anytime soon. So that's a good favorable pattern, again, for a cold and snowy eastern U.S. And what does a typical uh, La Nina winter outlook pattern look like? Uh, jet stream diving in, we have a good chance to see a lot of these uh, Texas panhandle storms, also uh, Denver type storms that will come in and affect, uh, again, the Great Lakes. Looks like we're in a prime condition to be wetter than normal, or in this case, snowier than normal, as we look now. But I think the biggest thing, we're not going to be terribly, terribly cold, I don't believe. I think we're going to see this uh, cold be more concentrated out into the plains and into Canada. And boy, we certainly have seen all the snow cover in Canada. So that makes a lot of sense there. But what we are going to be is in the big, big battle zone. We should be on the colder side more often than not. Certainly we'll have warm ups, but more often than not, we're going to be on the cold side of a very stormy pattern. And again, that's good news for winter across much of the Northeast and into the Great Lakes. And if we look at the North Atlantic Oscillation, the cold phases, uh, you can see this also has the uh, ridge over the top, and that usually is good news for cold and stormy conditions just on the below that. And again, that's a favorable pattern as well. If it moves just a little bit farther uh, west, that would actually, I think, uh, mean even more cold and snow for the Great Lakes. But right now, this is a good pattern set up. And what does that pattern often look like? deep troughs across the center of the nation and at the base of the trough these powerful storms develop and move up towards the Great Lakes or move up towards the Appalachians or the East Coast. Again, the busiest portion of the U.S. is going to be, I think, right in the Great Lakes area 
uh, whether it be uh, big snowstorms or possibly even rainstorms. Again, it's all independent on where each storm goes and uh, uh, some years you get lucky and some years you don't. As far as what the analog years look like around here, uh, I had some more snowfall totals. I cannot find those for these two years. But again, we have the number one and the number five snowiest years we've ever recorded here in Breckenridge in this analog package, along with overall, it's a little bit colder than normal conditions for the most part. And if we look at the uh, National Weather Service in Detroit, at some of the uh, areas of Detroit, those two years show up as number seven, number 10. In uh, Flint, they show up as number uh, nine and number 10. And Saginaw shows up as the fourth and the fifth snowiest months ever. Again, these snow totals you can see in the 70 inch range and 60 inch range, even at Detroit. So at least two of those years bode quite well for a lot of snow. Some of the years are a little bit below normal and most of them though are just a little bit above normal. And you can see the uh, NOAA's outlook. This was last month, I'm still waiting on the new one, but you can see that generally agrees with the analog package showing the coldest air coming in from the northwest towards the Great Lakes where the battle zone then begins. And you can see that makes sense with the battle zone. We see a lot of precipitation. And again, uh, everything right now is pointing to a very wet uh, uh, winter. If we look at the uh, weather bells, I'll look for temperatures last month, or their previous forecast for the winter had the normal line cutting right through mid-Michigan. And again, we would be in the battle zone on that, obviously. And then now they've just updated it, showing even a colder look to the forecast for the winter months of December, January, February. Again, I think had they seen the latest uh, European outlook for Detroit, they might have left the forecast like this. But uh, um, they certainly are going with a colder outlook. And as far as snowfall, they haven't changed that. You can see Michigan and much of the Great Lakes right in the heart of where we expect the uh, heaviest snowfall accumulations for the winter coming up. And again, so my forecast is uh, looking for temperatures uh, compared to last uh, month when I issued my preliminary, I think I had minus 1.6. So I'm siding a little bit with the European model just because of its tendency to be a much higher scoring uh, system. But I'm also looking at NOAA and then also taking in consideration the colder uh, weather belt outlook. But we'd still be below normal and as far as snowfall goes. I've increased that from around 52 and a half to 55 inches of snow I expect. And again, that would be 15 inches above normal. So again, we'd be pushing over four and a half feet of snow. And again, if uh, for a successful forecast, I wanna be in that 50 to 60 or 52 to 58 inch range. And I would consider that a good forecast. So it looks like potentially a very snowy winter coming up. Thanks for stopping by and have yourself a great day and 73s to all.